Hello and welcome to Shop Talk with Dan the Man. In today's video, we're going to review this bad boy. A seven and a quarter inch circular saw. Please stay tuned to find out more. Hello, if you're new to this channel, my name is Dan Shannon. I enjoy woodworking as a hobby and being out in the shop. On this channel, dive deep into my shop as we explore tools and tool reviews as well as chatting about everything related to woodworking. If this grabs you by the tool belt, please subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this. Thanks for joining me today in my shop. Today we're going to review this saw. It's model number R8654B. This is a seven and a quarter inch, and the reason why it's called a seven and a quarter inch is it's the diameter of the blade. So it's seven and a quarter blade that will fit on this particular unit. So that's where the seven and a quarter comes from. Let's dive into some features. So some features of this saw, let's, uh, let's do a little hands-on. So you're going to notice here uh, on the face of the saw, you have your straight edge um, for your blade. So underneath, uh, there's going to be a guard. Uh, you can access it with this uh, piece of plastic. It'll just kind of turn the guide. What's great about the guide is it protects your fingers obviously from the blade, but also if you're doing a smaller piece, say plywood, you're gonna have to raise the guard up to start in on your cut, and then you can let the guard go down. So it's great protection uh, for your fingers. It also doubles as, uh, you know, keeping the sawdust uh, from kicking back at you. Uh, if we go to the front of the saw, you're gonna notice there's the adjustment uh, here for your angle. So this saw here will do, uh, you know, right through from zero all the way to 59 uh, inches. So depending on what you're cutting uh, and what angle you want. So you just loosen this piece here and you just adjust your saw. So it gives you your, your different angle. As you can see there, I'll raise the, uh, the guard so you can see where the blade is. As you can see there, there's a perfect uh, bevel cut. So depending on whatever you're doing, uh, you can set the increments. Usually it clips in, uh, so there's a clip there, 15, uh, 22 and a half, uh, 30, 45, and 56 being the max. So sometimes it's helpful um, to get your exact measurement uh, to take your square and double check your blade. So you just make the adjustment and then you'd put your blade on there to make sure uh, you get your exact angle that you're uh, cutting for your project. So, so that's the front side. We do have another um, bracket here. Uh, it's a mount, uh, they call it a rafter hook. So super handy, uh, two by four will fit on that. So if you're on the job site, you can just clip it on uh, perfect uh, for hanging. I got two saw horses. There's a little hole in the end. You can stick this in that hole. It'll just hold the saw like that until you need it again. Perfect. So slide that down again. Uh, also in the front you have your handle. Uh, so when you're cutting you can have your hand here positioned and one in the front to stabilize your saw so it's not rocking or twisting. Uh, pinching the blade or causing kickback. It'll give you that extra stability. And if we swing it around to the back, you'll notice there's this other lever here, and this changes your depth. So this saw has a depth of 2 and 11 sixteenths uh, for your depth. So depending on what you're cutting, 
uh, you can change your blade. So that's pretty easy to do. I'll move the guard so you can see where the blade is. You just loosen this lever, bring it up, and then your platform will change automatically. So there's it in the most upright position. So as you can see there, the blade's not even in the board. And of course, as you bring it down, that'll change uh, that as well. So that's pretty straightforward there for your, for your depth. And then once you get it to where you want, uh, you can secure it. So it's always a good idea. Say if you're cutting through a board that's only say a half inch or an inch, you're gonna wanna adjust this bottom plate guard to give you that difference. You don't want too much blade for safety reasons. Uh, and that, it's extra blade that's spinning around uh, past the board. So you usually want to leave like the carbide tip or just uh, just enough to get through the material uh, and then back away. So it's easier on your motor too. It's not uh, cutting too much of the, the material out. Uh, it's only using a small part of the, the blade. So keep that in mind for cutting different uh, heights of wood whether it's a two by four, or like I said, a piece of plywood, uh, you can change the distance of your base uh, to give you that. So that's a little look uh, on the features. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other features that I have missed. Uh, of course, you have your um, back bracket uh, for your battery pack. So that's pretty easy to install. You can use any of Rigid's 18 volt battery packs. Uh, this one is a six amp hour it's a maximum output so it's their newer batteries it's supposed to give more power i do notice the difference in power when i use these versus the previous gen uh so you just just like a standard rigid tool you just line it up um and then clip it in and that's it and you'll notice uh one other feature i didn't go over yet there's a safety on the trigger uh so if you look um there's a a little guess a butterfly more or less piece that sticks out that just pushes down with your thumb and then of course you pull the trigger to engage the the blade so that's a really good safety if you're not paying attention you got to pull the trigger it won't work you got to push your thumb down and then apply the trigger so if you're right-handed left-handed there's one on either side so it doesn't really matter uh what hand you use for for the cutting um, it works for, for both sides. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of review. Uh, it does also come, uh, if you're swapping out a blade, it does come with an Allen key. And what I like about Rigid Tools is they always supply the tool itself to do the blade right inside the saw. So if you notice here, here's the Allen key. You just slide that out. Perfect. You come over to your uh, blade and there's a bolt. And then there's an arbor uh, piece that slides on uh, to snug the blade tight. Uh, and there's a black, if you notice here, there's this black pad. Uh, you just push down on that and that secures the blade from twisting. And then you put your Allen key in and then you loosen your bolt all the way out. Slide the blade out, slide your new blade, double check your rotation. Uh, it will have arrows on your blade. Uh, to tell you which rotation you need to, or which direction rather the uh, blade needs to go in before you remount it. Cause you don't want the blade on opposite uh, or else you're gonna have run into some issues. So I think that's great that Rigid has their Allen keys already supplied on the tool itself. So I think that's a good walk around uh, with this tool. Like I said, so many jobs you can use it on. Uh, you know, a lot of carpenters use it outside uh, for doing houses, uh, cutting uh, studs, uh, different things like that. I mean, the sliding miter saw, of course, uh, in shop, uh, takes you many different levels, outperforms this saw. Uh, but once again, it's in the shop. You can lug it around, but this is a better uh, tool to use on the fly uh, to basically get similar results. Uh, and you want to make sure when you cut, always use a, a square. Uh, this has a nice edge. I'll show you that coming up with the hands-on. But this has the straight edge square, so you can slide it, line it up with your board. 
and then when you use your saw, you have a great uh, guide uh, to line up your uh, saw with so it's not being all crooked and you get a straight cut. So I'll show you that now. Uh, we'll do some hands-on use of this saw. Okay, so I got a board here. Uh, we're gonna cut a piece off the end. Uh, in this particular case, this is a two by four. So two inches by four inches. So what we're gonna wanna do is take your saw and make sure you have the right clearance for your blade height. So you're gonna take your saw, you're gonna line it up with the bottom. You're gonna double check your depth to make sure that it's cutting through all the way. You want a little bit of blade to show uh, so that you know for sure it's getting through the material. And then you can go back once you've figured that out. Uh, if you have your pencil mark, you find out where your pencil mark is. Since this is a rough piece, we don't really care where we're going to cut. And before we cut, to make sure it's straight, we're going to draw it, grab our straight edge. We're going to line it up with the edge like so. And then that way it'll keep us nice and straight as we're tracking uh, through our cut. So we're all set up where we need to be. So let's fire up the saw. Don't have it tight to the board because uh, the teeth will grab. Pack it up slightly, turn it on. And that's it. It's as easy as it gets. So we ran one piece there. Uh, you can change uh, your angles. So if you're doing a 45, uh, you can mark it. And then, of course, uh, just as we showed uh, with the different angles, you can adjust your blade uh, to do an angle. So let's do the adjustment now for an angle, and uh, we'll give that a pass through, and you can see that. And then uh, we'll just follow through with the cut. Beautiful. So that's the hands-on review. As you can see, there's the 45 uh, that we were cutting. Nice, perfect. Thanks for watching today's video of this rigid cordless seven and a quarter inch circular saw. I appreciate uh, any comments you might have or any questions you might have about this saw. I've used the saw a lot and it's done me well. Uh, don't forget, this is a rigid tool to make sure you have 90 days to fill out your LSA. So that gives you a lifetime service agreement, not only on the tool, but if you buy any batteries through rigid, make sure you register those as well. So you have lifetime coverage. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have a lot more videos coming in the next while. So if you subscribe, you'll get the current ones as they get released. So stay tuned for more content like this. Have a great day.